It's a common problem that affects 85% of Americans, but could it be cured simply by cooling off? I'm talking about nightmares. According to the U.S. National Sleep Foundation, if your room is cool, it will be much easier to get that quality shut eye, which we know is so important, right? That's true. Yeah, in fact, there, it, some studies suggest that the best temperature to produce melatonin, which is that hormone that really helps you sleep, is between 60 and 68 degrees. So as you go too high above 70 degrees, apparently your melatonin production actually decreases. Mm -hmm. You might not be sleeping as well. Yeah. And, we, and we all go through this when it's too warm, we're kicking the, yep. the sheets, we're mm -hmm. tossing and turning. Very difficult to fall asleep. But Dr. Ish, I'm going to come to you. The importance of sleep when it comes to mental health is so important. It, one of the first things I tell my patients when they come in the hospital is the first thing we're going to do is get you a good night's sleep because with a good night's sleep, everything gets better. Without it, you have attention problems, you can have irritability, anxiety, and your cortisol increases over time, which as we know causes depression. And so it affects a lot of things that you just wouldn't think of. And that's one of the first chief complaints you get all the time with so many yes. mental disorders. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I'm having trouble sleeping. Yep. And that could be a sign of a number of Things, That's correct? a sign of a lot of underlying things that are going on, and especially when it comes to atypical or that harder depression to treat. So sleep six to eight hours solid is a good number to have. All right, we hear this so often. It's impossible to catch up on sleep, but what if you could? A new study published in the Journal of Sleep Research found that people who get little sleep during the week, those undersleepers out there, may be able to make up for it on the weekend. Now this is anathema to what we had all learned in medical school because it was always, you, you, you don't want to catch up on the weekend, it's going to make things worse. But in this study, they followed 40,000 subjects for 13 years. Those who slept less than five hours each night during the week had an increased risk of early death compared to those who slept six to seven hours a night. That's not new information. Mm -hmm. What was is that those individuals who got really short amounts of sleep during the week if they slept in on the weekend and got, got longer nights rest on the weekend, it actually improved their mortality risk. Mm -hmm. They came back up to that same category as people who got six to seven hours of sleep a night. So it sort of so, disproves the old yeah, theories, right? Which is cool. But can it. you sleep in on the weekends? I mean, we're so used to getting up no. at. Not if you have kids. I think that's the problem. Don't, Children are sort of a natural yeah, alarm don't clock they regardless. Don't sleep in a little bit? No. Of, no. Maybe when you're teenagers. There is proof Maybe out there that older. you can overcome sleep deficits. My concern, if you just look at the study, is you may think that the way to go is undersleep during the week and then just sleep in on the weekends. I don't think that's the answer. I think if you have a job where you sleep really poorly during the week, yes, occasionally you're going to have to make up for it. But I still think the best pattern is if you can do six to seven a night, maybe even a little more, be consistent, sleep-wake cycle. If you can do that based on your job, your kids, that would still be the ideal.